Hey, welcome back to the Vitnerd. Uh, today is a very special day in the Vitnerd studios. Uh, you see uh, Fujinet's laid out here, uh, Lothrax uh, Tari Fujinet uh, Pro, the, the, you know, that, that thing will outlive uh, even the cockroaches. Uh, the Tari Fujinet's here, uh, Tari, um, no, Apple also starts with A. Uh, well, that's funny. Uh, for Fuji, Fujinet for Apple, Commodore, but this one here, this is the Fujinet RS-232. And if you'd be uh, confused about never hearing about it, because you haven't, most likely haven't, this is one of the rare available ones right now uh, yes. that Brian Cox from FB Research is loaning me so that we can play with it. So uh, Brian, go ahead and tell us what is the backstory here? Absolutely, yes. This is the Fujinet for RS-232. And this week, right now, uh, Moswald is getting ready to release version one. So that means we consider it production ready. So the Fujinet RS-232, right now they have a config sys driver written and available so we can use it on PC compatible computers with a built-in serial interface. And what's nice is we are now bringing the PC computers and even more RS-232 computers, hopefully, into the Fujinet family. So that means we're going to have multi-platform games that now PC can join. They already have five card stud written, for instance, nice. and it's going to go from there. And one of the things that you do want to remember though about the Fujinet for RS-232 is this is one that does require external power. And we'll talk about that when we're ready to do a setup. Yeah, there's some caveats here, but it is working. Yes. It is working quite well. So let's go ahead and um, let, let, let me have that back. You betcha. Let me have that That's back. That's for you to use. Precious. <laughs> no. Um, so we're going to go ahead. Uh, I've got my uh, CompuAd uh, uh, 325 over here, and we're going to hook it up, and we're going to see what this does. Okay. So we've got... Uh, the CompuAd uh, 386 here with a couple serial ports in it. We've got, uh, well, I saddled Brian with the Cherry mouse board, the uh, built-in mouse in the Numeric keypad. It's a DOS video. I just wanted to use that today. And then we've got the Fujinet for RS-232. I got to get used to that new name right here, connected to the 9-pin serial port on the CompuAd. And you have it plugged into power, so this is powered up, and you're talking to it from your modern PC for configuration. Yes, indeed. So take us through it. What are we, what are we going to do here? Right. Well, I think, Steve, a good thing to do would talk about what it took to get to this point ready to use the Fujinet RS-232 with your computer. As you mentioned, it's here ready connected to a COM port on a 9-pin serial. And then we have a USB-C connection going to just a regular power strip. And we actually powered up the USB-C into the Fujinet before we powered up the computer. Now, before we can talk to the Fujinet, we need to load a config sys driver. And our best friend is going to be the quick start file. That's a wiki document that Fujinet has made available. It will take you through the steps I'm going to discuss, but it'll take them through step by step. If you visit my website, fvresearch.com, go to the product page for the Fujinet for RS-232. I have a quick link for that quick start document, <laughs> and then you can also see it at fujinet.online. Now, what it takes to talk between the Fujinet and the PC is a config sys driver, and they have actually written that driver and made it available. So you'll need to visit the GitHub page, actually, which is talked about in the, dis in the Discord, but then also that quick start document. And we need to load that config sys here into the computer, and that's a device equals, and it's the config sys driver. When you edit that driver, it will actually default to assuming you're on COM1, but you can really put this on any COM port that your computer has available. When you say edit the driver, not the actual driver itself, you're talking in the config sys file? You're right, editing right. the config sys file, very good point. You tell the driver which port to use and stuff. Yes, Right. very true. That driver that we edit in, inside, when we edit config sys, <laughs> you could specify the COM port and you can actually specify the baud rate that it talks at. 
Mm -hmm. It's going to which is very important. Yes, not for this, not for super speed, but if you got issues, you gotta you gotta pull that back, lower the baud rate, and get rid of the issues in communication. It all depends on your computer, eighty eighty eight, two eighty six, whatever, whatever your serial port can manage because the Fujian is just throwing data through that. Right. Very true. Yeah. And what we're finding and testing is the UART, that communication chip in the specific computer, it also has a lot to do with mm -hmm. the baud rate that it is actually capable of communicating. Mm -hmm. Not only is it important so that we have reliable communication, but the baud rate that you mentioned in the config sys file needs to match the baud rate on an INI file that the FujiNet itself is actually viewing. Before getting to this point, I actually took the SD card that I have in here and edited an INI file on the SD card. It's FujiNet.ini. Mm -hmm. And that has all the particulars for the configuration for this device. What happens when you power up the FujiNet, it actually reads that file and understands what you want it to do. The Wi-Fi configuration, your Wi-Fi um, SSID and password is in that file. Oh, I never use password. And, no. <laughs> well, there sure was one that used that time. <laughs> and in fact, you can see because that white LED is on, we know that the FujiNet connected to internet by reading the information on that INI file. And then that file also has the baud rate that the FujiNet RS-232 is using. So that's really your first step when you're getting ready to use this device is get a hold of that INI file and it is available in that quick start document as well. Mm -hmm. You can download an example, put it onto an SD card, and then you can actually power up the FujiNet with USB and watch it connect to Wi-Fi before it's even touching the serial connection. And that's your verification that your Wi-Fi settings are good and you're online. Exactly right. And or at least it's online mm -hmm. and exactly then you turn on right. your computer. Right. And we're still actually not ready to turn on the PC yet. So let's say that we've edited that file, set it up, it's connected to Wi-Fi as we know from this white light. The next step is actually to have a quick chat with your FujiNet from a modern web browser computer, mm -hmm. which I have set up here. Just like we do with the Atari FujiNets. Exactly You've right. got the Wi-Fi interface and you can do some settings in there. Very true. Yep. And this is where the FujiNet RS-232 branches off somewhat from the other platforms. For instance, both uh, Apple and FujiNet Oh, excuse me, <laughs> Apple and Atari FujiNets, they have a config program that launches on boot. Right. You connect your FujiNet, power it up, it asks you what Wi-Fi you want, and then it gives you a menu where you can browse TNFS servers or SD cards and then mount drive slots. We do not have a config program yet as of September 2025. Right. So the FujiNet team has done a great job of getting the hardware going and you can configure it from a modern computer's web interface to the FujiNet. Later on, they'll have the DOS side and also probably for other platforms as of yet, because again, it's RS-232, it can work on anything with that as long as you got a driver. But I think it's fantastic that you can still you just do it on the modern computer and it works great on the uh, PC DOS. I agree. Yeah. And, and it's really, and what's nice is once you configure that once, and what I mean by configure, let me actually discuss that and I'll, I'll sh point out something with the device. So mm -hmm. from my computer here, I'm just in a regular web browser and I browse to FujiNet. So for instance, it would just be the normal HTTP colon slash slash FujiNet. That is the name by default that the FujiNet is broadcasting on your wireless network. So as soon as I entered that address, this web page that we see is actually coming from the FujiNet itself. And we can actually browse not only the SD card files, but TNFS servers that we enter here in this general window here. As we, and this we demonstrated with other devices as well, but the idea is you can pick a server and then you pick a disk image and the normal extension I'm finding is .dsk. And what's interesting is where with the Atari or Apple, I find usually one disk image ends up being one program, one application. Yeah. But what we're going to show here is that disk image could be even a hard drive disk image even. It doesn't have to be just a floppy. Mm -hmm. But we mount them into slots as with other uh, FujiNet brands or platforms. But each of these slots 
once the PC boots, then it will actually assign a drive letter to each of the slots that we've mounted. And just, just to note, those slots, they are just pointers to where the actual disk data is on the internet. Yes, very right. good point. It's not bringing anything into the memory or storage on the actual FujiNet itself. Yet. It'll right. bring it through it onto your PC later right. when we get there. Right, and technically what you could do, this may be getting a little bit too deep, but you could mount your SD card as one slot and then you could mount uh, a, another disk image and then copy things between those two locations. Mm -hmm. And then you are copying it locally. Right. But that's one of the, the wonderful things about how the FujiNet team has already established with this. You can have multiple drive letters to work with, and then you're moving around like you would in DOS, running directories, creating files, editing files like you would on if you were working off of floppies or hard drives. Nice, nice. Now, a really important thing I want to point out, when you're on this web page viewing from the FujiNet, You've selected all of your images. Before you power up your computer, you'll see at the top of the mounting is a mount all button. That's basically a mount all link. Click that. That tells the FujiNet you want all of these images to be loaded as disk drive letters. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that, you're not going to see those drive letters. You're right. So let's now say, here we are, ready to go. We've mounted all of our drives. As soon as the computer boots, it will load up the FujiNet driver, which we've added to the config sys file, and it will report immediately if it sees the FujiNet. So you can see that, uh, you may or may not be able to read this on the screen, but it has told me that it launched the FujiNet driver. On port one, it gives me the baud rate, and then it also gives me the FujiNet firmware version, and we are here ready at a drive prompt. Nice. Now, this computer has two floppies and one hard drive. So mm -hmm. it's used physical. A, yeah. Physical, right, good point. So that has A, B, and C. If I go to the D drive, I am now talking over the internet. This D colon, the information I run when I get a directory, that is coming over the internet from a TNFS server. So if I run a directory, it is actually reading this list of executables and files over the internet from that file. And the, the orange status light was blinking. Yes, a good right. point. And we can see here the two LEDs that the RS-232 FujiNet has is a connection light for Wi-Fi and then a data or communication light. And um, I could, and from here, I could make a file and or run a file, whatever I'd like to do. I can go to other drive letters. I had uh, let's see, two different images mounted, so I would expect to have a D drive and an E drive. If I change to E and I run a directory, we can see here, this is the five card stud version, which is written uh -huh. for the PC. So this is part of the five card stud FujiNet family, which is the... So somebody on an Atari 8-bit with five card stud with FujiNet and the Apple and the IBM, you can play over the internet against each other. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the wonderful things with the FujiNet. Not only when you get a FujiNet, are you having the ability to run a network adapter for your device, plus load files, etc. You're actually joining into a community that spans many platforms with more to come. Mm -hmm. Now, if I run five card stud, it runs. You know, that, that was quite a marketing pitch. Yes, right? well, you know, <laughs> I do sell them, so I need to add those in. Not to mention, that's one of the best selling points I find. Yes. Yeah. Right, because there are other adapters for different platforms, mm -hmm. but it's for a specific platform. Right. And that's the great thing about the FujiNet, which the name came from the Atari world because it was on the Atari first, but it is just spread across all different platforms. Yes. Yep. I agree. Now, let's say that I would like to run a program and it run, we're actually just in a regular DOS environment now. The FujiNet is transparent to what we're doing. As far as this old computer is concerned, it is talking to a hard drive. Or From a the driver, drive. because mm -hmm. of the driver. Exactly, yep. all thanks to that FujiNet.sys driver. So if I wanted to run the executable FCS for five card stud, and by the way, this is from the Irata uh, TNFS server that is available. And by default, that link for that server comes available on the, the actual FujiNet. Mm -hmm. But I will run that executable. Now, it is actually now loading this executable over the internet 
onto the computer itself. And here we are ready to start uh, our own five card st stud game. So if I enter my name, then it's first going to give me some basic instructions. I'll press enter. And then we get a list of tables that are available. So you can see right now we have, uh, no one else is actually online at the moment, but we have various rooms. If you don't have anyone that you'd like to play with at the moment, you could actually play against some bots if you mm -hmm. wanted to. So, and then of course I can hit Q for quit and then we come back to the DOS prompt. Sweet. So um, uh, I do have plans to uh, do a live stream of playing uh, Fujinet games. Uh, you know, Atari, IBM, yes. and so we'll we'll get a whole bunch of different machines together, a bunch of people all online at once. But additionally, um, I'm going to do more other videos with this FujiNet with Atari Portfolio, which is a, a uh -huh. MS DOS. It's got a serial port. The drive, as long as I get the driver. So that's the thing is, or the driver onto it. That's the thing is, you configure the FujiNet for RS two thirty two through the web interface and then you just need to get the one driver file onto your OG retro vintage PC M MS DOS machine so you either your floppy's got to work or you got to have an SD card interface or over serial port you know use PC link as well, yes, long as you can physically get that driver onto that old hardware that's all you need plug in the Fujinet and boots up and um if you got IRQ conflicts, you got to take some stuff out. But basically, that's all you need to get this going. Right, exactly right. And mm -hmm. fortunately, because it's using a default COM port, usually the COM ports on computers will have the, the IRQ to themselves if, if right. we're lucky. <laughs> right, absolutely. So um, was there any other magic at this moment to show off on that? Uh, I think really all the magic is now what do each of the end users want to do for themselves? I'm sure that... Each user, you may have stacks of floppy disks and you would like to archive them. You mm -hmm. can now do that. You, if you have a physical floppy drive, you could read those, copy them now. Onto the SD card that's local on the FujiNet. Or if you have a modern computer running a local TNFS server, ah, okay. you could even copy them over to that as well. Okay. Multiple oh. opportunities. Yes, indeed. So cool. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, playing with this this week. Thank you for loaning it to me until I can get one in October for real. And then um, again, other videos will be online. Uh, I'm going to try it on an e-machine and some other crazy PC DOS things I've got kicking around. Uh, Brian, thank you very much for loaning this to me and getting it over here and doing the video. And uh, you know, any comments uh, people or questions people have, put them in the comments. Brian, you check the video and you respond right, to people. Exactly. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, everybody, thanks for watching. And uh, we'll catch you soon.